you figure out what your non-negotiables will be. Mm -hmm. For example, I'm gonna feed my mind, I'm gonna train my body, mm -hmm. I'm gonna stay close to God. I'm gonna treat my job the way it's supposed to be treated. Meaning this is another thing I'll teach in the financial side of the book. Whatever you're doing that's bringing you income, you need to be so grateful, not for what you do, for what it gives you. Mm. When you tie that into your gratitude, you'll become the best version of whatever it is you're trying to do. And for lack of a better term, if you're a doodle -doo shoveler, okay? <laughs> I don't care if whatever it is that you're doing, find gratitude and become the best version of that. Cause that's only practices that are gonna lead you into other things. When I found myself not being grateful for my job, it led to procrastination. Happy Wednesday. Thanks so much for tuning in for this week's edition of the Getting the Win Show. I'm your host, Melissa Thomas, AKA Melissa T, the procrastination bully. And as promised, this is part two of my interview with Chris Nunez. And this, this episode, we talk a little bit more about his expectations and the things he wants to, you know, release to the world as part of his trifecta mindset brand. He's got some exciting things coming up. So we get to talk more about that. And we do get into the nitty gritty of procrastination on this episode in terms of the tools that he leans on to stay as productive as possible each day. And we kind of get a kind of a rebound in terms of the importance of health. You guys who tune into my conversation with Lisa A. Smith, the plant-based health coach, we get into it a little bit. Chris and I get into that a little bit in this episode too. So by all means, tune in for his tools and how he remains productive. And if the health thing is for you, tune in and take notes there too. Enjoy. And the biggest thing that I wanted to make sure nobody missed was the responsibility. Yes. The responsibility that you have we think a lot, it's not my responsibility on how you feel for what I just said. No, it actually is. It really is because the way they're going to respond to you is all based on how you decided to articulate yourself, what you decided to say, how yep. you decided to either feel empathetic or not towards it. Not only does it do that, it also gives you the understanding of how they're going to respond to you. It'll honestly let you know what conversations you probably should also walk away from. Right. I got Ooh, to the point. Yes. Spoke yes. I leveled with you. We communicated in a way. I tried to get you to communicate this way. It's very easy to see now it's not being reciprocated. And then becomes even easier to why you want to now exit this conversation. Per so se. good. <laughs> so good. This actually ties back to the conversation I had with Jessica Holly in terms of like her her brand is everybody can't go. And that ties into it. Like there are times when you have to know when to exit the conversation. I love that you made that point because there are times when, to your earlier point about emotionally communicating, we'll want to prove a point and make sure we're right. And listen, there's one thing we always talk about in the faith-based world. Like, do you want to be right or do you want to have peace? <laughs> mm. There are times when you have to. There are times when you have to relinquish the desire to be right to prioritize the desire for peace. Like Gosh. I would, would you rather maintain your point or maintain the relationship? Mm. You know what I mean? Come there are on, times when you have to, yeah, there are times you have to respectfully exit the conversation, mm. you know? And it gives you the time to realize like, well, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> Cause <laughs> that a lot, there was a lot of times where I realized I've, you know, practiced these things and I thought back about it. I was like, you know what? I wasn't right in the situation. Mm. Let me now open up that door. You know what? I had time to think about it. And you are absolutely correct in everything that you stated. And you know what? I apologize. Right. It's really that simple. It, right. Where you start to really like deliberately, right? Pay attention to these things. Because what I always like to say is, well, what we do consciously is what comes out in our subconscious, right? Mm. The scientific fact. What comes out the most in our subconscious when we're emotionally driven in any which way, passionately, emotionally, when we have an urge to passionately do something, 
This is when our subconscious kicks in. That we do things or say things that we normally wouldn't even think about because it's deep rooted in who we actually mm -hmm. really are. So when you pay attention to these things consciously, you're going to find yourself emotionally. And this is not just love emotionally. It could be relationship. It could be your passions in life. It could be what you're called purposefully to do. It could be when you pray. Yep. It could be your relationship with God, right? You'll find yourself articulating yourself and emotionally communicating the way your subconscious wants you to because you're paying attention to this consciously. And yep. that's the biggest thing I want anyone to understand of why communicating effectively is so important, even if communication is not part of your passion in life. You're going to have to communicate with everyone in some way, shape, or form. In the faith-based world, as we know, in the beginning was what? The word. It was words. How we spoke. It, it, it is everything and anything you're trying to accomplish in any which way, form of life. Even if whatever you're trying to accomplish, you don't speak. You're going to have to speak to somebody in some way, shape, or form. And there's just no way around it. It really isn't. And that could literally be the literal difference between the door that was open for you or the one that you shut yourself. Mm. Mm -hmm. That part. Yeah. That part. Absolutely. And I mean words are thought so it's not like we can get away from them because even with what you're feeding your subconscious with those are words too so the key here like you're you're hearing a, a very hard through line in this conversation like get them words up yes, <laughs> you know yes. what i mean Absolutely. What, whatever your language is if english might be your second language and you have a mm -hmm. you know a different mother tongue like get them words up yeah, in yeah. in all your languages, you know what I mean? Like become as versatile a communicator as possible because then you'll be able to more effectively reach other people. Absolutely. Um, and the last thing I wanted to say with that too is that it's okay to. Mm -hmm. I think it's become this underlying, which is something that uh, gets my nerve, is counterproductive inspiration. Inspiring okay. you in a way that's feeding your hurting self. Not your. Oh, that's good. Right. There's a lot of things that, I see that are going on where. And the funny thing is, it gets more reaction. Right. Mm -hmm. Because it's mm -hmm. emotionally driven. So I get it. But what I feel almost like with music, there needs to be a redemption side to this. You can't just feed and show me the broken me and just leave me there. Right. Right. You're just just leaving me there. So what's been the underlying thing when it comes to communication? If you learn to communicate at a certain way, you're just becoming more this. Who told you that? Why did you allow yourself to even believe that? Right? Why, what, what made you think that, one, if anybody asks me what's the worst advice I've ever heard, stay the same. Worst advice I've ever heard in my life. I think emotionally at your core, who you are as a human, right here, like your belief in God, people you love, absolutely. That should always should have a very keen sense of that. But when it comes to things like what you're exposing yourself to, what you just you should learn more about, and this comes from both sides, this side and this side, right? There's this keen sense of unproductive inspiration that if you go too far on either end of what we should all learn from, that you're somehow disconnecting from your true self. And I'm just telling anyone here who might, might be struggling with that might feel like they're losing their sense of identity because they're growing more into the person that they're becoming as opposed to who they were and what show, and what environment showed you you should be. Mm -hmm. There's really nothing wrong with that. You keep the keen self of who you are, but learning to speak better, learning to communicate better, learning to effectively learn more, right? Learning how to just absorb these things that this world is trying to teach you in whatever realm you're pushing yourself into. There's really nothing wrong wrong with that it's actually everything that god is pushing you to become and i struggled with that for a long time so i wow. wanted to make sure i put that fact out there i found myself in two different worlds and felt that if i was i needed to be here here and here there and if i swayed too much i was becoming disingenuous that was mm -hmm. one of the biggest fat lies that the enemy tried to put into my brain <laughs> it's taking you so much from your unique self because what happens this whole little ball of uniqueness starts to form that literally becomes your truest self if you just continue to grow in that light man very true very true 
Yeah. Don't don't follow what the what your day ones are telling you necessarily. You know, yeah. Yeah. pay. Pay closer attention to your day twos, especially if your day twos are like accountability folks, folks that are calling you to a higher version of yourself. Like yeah. keep going. Yes. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And the keep real going. day ones will be like, man, that's awesome. I want to learn. What is that? Then you learn from each other, right? Like as you grow, and that's the hard part. When you grow, mm -hmm. you start to realize what's for you, what ain't, what you should leave gracefully, what you should nurture gracefully. Right. And then again, yes. you, you focus on communication and with anything, if you evolve, it's going to blossom and ball into so many other things. But I mean, that's what led us here to, to kind of who we are today. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So like going back to, you know, the trifecta mindset, talk about what your vision is for 2024 for the brand. And, you know, what's what's the most exciting thing you're looking forward to releasing this year? Yeah, so the most exciting thing I'm looking forward to releasing first is the book itself. It, it has its own ecosystem to where you have the motivational videos, you have clothes coming, there's CMOS line and products that I'm going to have along with it. But the core base that I'm most excited about is this motivational, inspirational, almost slightly poetic, poetically written self-help self -help book, which mm -hmm. you're going to be able to literally break down everything you've ever learned because I literally take you on a whole intuitive journey for yourself. And I'm really excited that it's going to do two things. You're either going to stare purpose in the face and knowing that what you're already doing is your purpose, or you're going to find it. Mm. Truly find what that is. Because one thing's for sure, if you focus on your faith, your finances and your health, which most importantly, I repeat over and over in this book, what it means to you. Not me, what that means to you. Because if I tell you to close your eyes and make a quantum leap and ask yourself, what would 120% your faith, your finances and your health out of not 80, not 90, not 100, I'm talking about 120. What would you look like? What would you sound like? What would you speak like? How would you love? What kind of coworker would you be? Parent, pet yep. owner, I mean, you name it. What kind of person would this would this make you? And when you dial back to forget everything you've ever learned, because our perspectives is all we've ever learned, right? Mm -hmm. And allow yourself to now grow into the space to kind of just relearn everything you've ever learned mm -hmm. and push yourself to this realm. Man, I'm, I'm just most excited to how many people are going to stare purpose in the face and how much healing is going to happen within that process. Because what it did for me, man, if it can do this for me at 30, when I started this at 36, <clears throat> 37, with a slew of things that I've, that I've had to overcome from father passing away to loved ones in prison to, you know, drug abuse to porn addiction to alcohol and weed abuse to so many things that I was able to grow from and become the person that I am in such a short time. I mean, I, I'm just mostly excited to what it's going to be able to do for so many others. It's not even about me anymore. It's about everyone else, honestly. And that's really awesome. what I'm excited about. Awesome. So given, given everything that you have grown from and everything that you're involved in now, how do you normally maintain productivity in your life? You know, given the kind of schedule that you have, you do have a nine to five, like you, mm -hmm. you have your business and you have, and you have a job. So talk about, you know, the tools you use to remain as productive as possible. Absolutely. Well, surrounding myself with people mm -hmm. who choose, you know, who allow me to grow, um, not being purposefully putting myself in rooms where I'm not the smartest person in the room. Having accountability partners who really are chasing something in life that's somewhat in direct alignment with what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, and reading. I, I can't express, maybe it's the writer or poet in me, but I can't express enough how much reading a physical book. Audio is great as well because it's going to sit in your mind, right? Mm -hmm. But something for me about reading a physical book, it's holding yourself accountable to what it is that you're doing, right? So I built a little, non, again, non-negotiable 
parts of my life, there needs to be like, you figure out what your non-negotiables will be. Mm -hmm. For example, I'm going to feed my mind. I'm going to train my body. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stay close to God. I'm going to treat my job the way it's supposed to be treated. Meaning this is another thing I'll teach in the financial side of the book. Whatever you're doing that's bringing you income, you need to be so grateful not for what you do, for what it gives you. Mm. When you tie that into your gratitude, you'll become the best version of whatever it is you're trying to do. And for lack of a better term, if you're a doodle shoveler, okay? <laughs> I don't care if whatever it is that you're doing, find gratitude and become the best version of that. Because that's only practices that are gonna lead you into other things. When I found myself not being grateful for my job, it led to procrastination. It's okay, simple. y'all. It, it really is that simple. When I didn't take this kind of thought process with me, like if I'm going to go speak, if mm -hmm. I'm jumping on an interview, if I'm writing, if I'm articulating my thoughts, I take that same level of tenacity with me to my job. Why? It gives me a bed to sleep in. It gives me a home. That it allows me to like have clothes on my back. It allows me to put money into my ventures. It allows me to feed into my purpose. Like it allows me to even buy the very Bible that I am reading every single day. So that who part. am I to not care about this level of income, even if I know this is not where I'm going to be right? Those little things really feed into how I continuously, what I like to call an ecosystem of my inspiration. Oh, you create good. an ecosystem to inspire you every day. Do I have the same feeling every day? No, but this is why the ecosystem is there. You provide and do these things for the days you don't feel like doing them. I train and run the way I do for the days I don't feel like doing it. <laughs> right? I show up for my job and be the best version of myself for the days I don't feel like clocking in. Like, let's be honest. We don't always want to clock in. We don't always want to be the best version of ourselves. I don't always want to get up and run. Right? Even my dog. I don't always <laughs> want to take him outside. Like, we don't <laughs> always want to do these things. I'm not going to sit here and act like I am this person all of the time. No, 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 no. But I do this for those days. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it easier. That's what makes re recognizing I might be procrastinating right now. Let me rely on what I'm doing. Let me rely on this because the days you feel good, you work on that. And that's a little key that a lot of people don't think of that I realize is something that God put in my heart to share with most who are trying to be inspired right, or looking for inspiration. The days that you do, work on those on that for the days you won't be. Mm. What made you feel inspired today that was different from the day you're not gonna be inspired? So mm -hmm. you can recognize it and push yourself anyway. Because that's really the difference between us who decide to do something in life and those who kind of sit with the idea. It, it's literally the act. That, that's, that. It, it, it's, it's that little thing. We're talking about procrastination, right? On how we can help those who find themselves procrastinating because my Lord, did I stay in bed for so many years? Mm -hmm. Did I find it hard to get up out of bed for so many years? Did I quit jobs for no reason because I just didn't want to get out of bed? Not wow. show up for my child because I didn't want to get up out of bed. Not answer calls from my family because I just did not want to have these conversations. Wow. I really didn't. I procrastinated in every which way you could think of. I would work out for two, three months, start to see the results. You know, my shirt start to feel a little different. <laughs> that, that's it. What, what I need to go to the gym for? Mm. Maybe I'll just go twice this week. You know, I kind of got to where I'm going, which is that's a whole nother form of procrastination, right? Right. But to not get so lengthy in it, because, man, I'll sit here and talk to y'all for four hours. No problem, right? <laughs> Set an ecosystem around what makes you not feel inspired. You find out what these things are in the days that you are. How did I feel today that made me do this? Was mm -hmm. it because I shaved? Was it because I put on nicer clothes? 
Was mm. it because in the morning I decided to walk my dog the moment I woke up and that made me feel a little different, right? Am I a night workout person or am I a morning workout person, right? What did I listen to before I went to work that made me this day, I felt inspired to do what I was doing. But tomorrow, I don't really feel this way. What was I watching? What was I listening to? What was I reading? What did I eat? That, <laughs> that's a big one. That is, man, if we're going to get into the health things, I'm more, I'm so <laughs> much more about cellular health than I am about external health. Cause that, that comes, but for real, if you don't realize that everything you decide to drink, eat, watch, if there's not behavior modifiers in them, even down to the very food that you're consuming, that coffee you're buying, that donut you're eating, there is literal, and I learned this from pharmaceutical sales and understanding the human anatomy. There is behavior modifiers, literally, not mm -hmm. figuratively. No, literally. Lit, literal behavior modifiers. Yes. That if it consumed enough, actually has a direct reflect on how you actually feel around procrastination. No, it's true. It li it's, li it's literally true. Yeah. Really Man, you guys... You guys, you know, saw the interview with uh, Lisa A. Smith. And if you haven't, go back and watch that one. Yes. Um, we talked about that because she's a plant-based um, plant based diet coach and, mm -hmm. and business coach. And that's her thing. You know what I mean? Like, put down the foods that have those modifiers in them. Like, yeah. eat, eat from the earth. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, that way your stuff is as clean as possible because there's a doctor that I follow, Dr. Mark Hyman, and mm -hmm. he likes to say, he likes to say food is information mm. because literally once it breaks down in your body, it becomes these different enzymes and different, you know, it triggers different hormones, different neurotransmitters, like mm -hmm. it's data. And if we being real about the stuff that's processed, they put stuff in there to intentionally addict you. Yes. This Absolutely. is why... This is why you notice there's sugar in pretty much everything you eat, even if yes. the thing doesn't taste sweet. Mm -hmm. They sneak the sugar in there because yes. sugar is meant to be, sugar has the same effect on your brain as a narcotic. It's meant to be addictive because they want you to buy more of it. Absolutely. I mean, if you think about natural That's sugar in itself, right? Because like I start my morning every day, simple two dates and lion's mane coffee, which I recommend one. Incorporate dates and lion's mane into your life. Lion's mane is a mushroom that actually repairs neurotransmitters in your brain. Things that you may have stopped thinking about, things that, because it's literally an, an electrical currency when your yep. thought goes to your mind. It's literally your brain is floating and it's connected through electricity. Yep. Things that you eat, things that you do, things you expose yourself to actually either strengthens this electricity or will completely break it. Completely. Mm -hmm. Lion's mm -hmm. Mane has the, the actual like scientific way to do this for you, which is why I was put on this earth, right? I like to say, if it's from seed, I agree. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's that simple. From seed, I'm agreed on it, you know? Yeah. Um, but something like dates, which is all sugar. Yeah, very diet. sweet. Very sweet, right? Dates, and I, and I learned this from working in type 2 diabetes, it is recommended for diabetics. Think about this. Something that's naturally sugar is recommended for diabetics. Why? Because there's a complete difference between artificial sugar and yes. sugar that God put on this earth, right? Correct. So eating two dates in the morning actually completely balances out your entire from blood to vein system. Nice. Completely balances out and actually flushes out all the bad toxins from your lymphatic system. Just different from your endocrine system. Mm -hmm. They're connected. And to make it very simple, your lymphatic system is like the oil of your car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Your blood and everything, that's the oil you put in, how much you drive it. That they kind of coincide. But what happens is it don't matter how many times you change the tire. It don't matter how many times you change the brakes. You could change the steering wheel. You could change the outside of the car. If you don't change that oil, that car is going to shut down on you. So if you don't figure out what affects your lymphatic system, like natural things, intake of water, right? Exposing yourself to things like sea moss, which is, I'm just a huge advocate of because it takes all the mucus out of your body. 
right? The reason I'm bringing all this up, because when you find yourself procrastinating, when I made the change of my diet at this time mm-hmm. back in 2019, the difference was I always worked out, but I was drinking powdered protein. I was trying to think that eating eight, nine times a day to build muscle, all this mm. stuff was, and I found myself super hard to get out the bed the next day. Mm. There was no oxygen being fed to my brain. There was nothing that was flushing out the mucus out of my body. There was no like real deal fiber being put into my system. So now I'm waking up the next day foggy. How? Mm-hmm. I was in the gym for three hours. How are you telling me? I drank water. I ran. I did all these things. How do I not want to get out the bed the next day? Still heavy. That little simple change in diet started to really change how I started to perceive everything. And all the energy I found around now, I look at procrastination like, yeah, okay. Please, <laughs> bro, you ain't got nothing. Right. No, you like, I could even see you coming from a mile away now. That's that you coming down the street. Right. Bro, like, like, like Debo and Friday. You know, I used to like, <laughs> here comes procrastination. Let's you know, put my things away, you know, but. Bro, you ain't right. got nothing on me now. Now it's like, oh, I see you coming down the street. What you got? Exactly. Even if you might knock me off for five minutes. Nah, man. The way I'm, the way I'm articulating myself to God, the way I'm surrounding myself around people, the gratitude I have around everything that I do, the things I eat, and who I'm expo- what I'm exposing myself to. That right there, mm. you will be procrastination every single time. Notice I said beat it, not cure it. It's something that will come. It, it's going to keep trying to eat at you. And if anybody knows about working out, we spoke about this. When you first start working out or eating right, you ain't going to feel good right away. Oh, no. No, no. You're, you're going <laughs> to feel a little bad about yourself. Yeah, you feel worse first, as yeah. uh, Myron, Golden, Myron Golden says. You'll feel worse first. <laughs> oh, man, absolutely. Myron Golden is amazing, by the way. Yeah. You're, you're flushing these things out of your body, and it's just like a detox. Yes. I encourage anyone, when you start to first make these changes, you're going to go through a few little, it's almost like a glitch in your system. Withdrawal. Be like, wait a minute, what, what's, what's going on? Where, where's Withdrawal. The where's the starch? Where's these... You know, Tropicana juices. Where's all this Snapple? Where's these things you normally are giving me? Where's the Dunkin' Donuts at? What was happening? Mm-hmm. You know, like, what? But what happens is you stick to this day after day. You feel better. You feel better. You feel better. And if there's any one little switch that you need to get away from procrastination, there's one thing you can do. If there's one thing I would rely on outside of everything, well, honestly, let me say too, because God is first and foremost in everything. If you don't have that, I'm sorry to tell you, there's going to be things that are going to continuously seep into your spirit that will cause this laziness and procrastination. But if you don't change the way you eat. That. I, I that's mean, one of the biggest ones. It's it, one of the honestly, biggest ones. It's the biggest one because you can read you can read every book under the sun. You can watch every interview. You can sit here and watch our conversation for six months straight. You're not going to absorb this if you do not change what you put into your body, man. And yeah. that's from food to information. You don't change these things. It's not going to matter. It, it really isn't. And I hate to say sure. it because I love me some sugar. Bro, like, listen, listen. recovering sugar addict here, man. Come on now. <laughs> same here. Same here. Like, even the coffee I'm drinking now, there's not a not even a little bit. It's to the point that I drink my coffee now. I don't even care what it tastes like. It's not even about wow. that. Much. It's about waking me up and it's about what it's doing to my body. I that think about all those things. Yeah. People don't know. Coffee is a, a natural. When you drink it black, y'all, I'm not talking about with all the ingredients in it. Coffee, when had black, is a natural vasodilator. It opens up your blood vessels. Yeah. So you be careful of how much you drink because yeah. caffeine is a thing. Yes, <laughs> but absolutely. but it does naturally help open up your blood vessels. Yeah, it comes from seed. It has yep. its benefit. It has its way that it's meant to be absorbed and used. But like with anything, like my dad would say, even too much water will drown your lungs. 
that. <laughs> <laughs> like that that's a that's a real fact. So one cup of coffee, y'all were telling you <laughs> straight black and you should be just fine. Yeah, yeah. But it's really, it's really that, man. If there was anything that I'll tell anybody and everything we spoke of, right? Right? You have and I love the fact that you focus so much on procrastination and bring people on here to give them knowledge on how not to procrastinate or what to do when you do procrastinate because it's okay to feel that way it really is i allow these emotions to process by the way that's important but that's a, that's as quick as how i kick it out the door mm. <laughs> like i acknowledge that you're here i acknowledge what you're trying to do but um here's the door thank you right for by. <laughs> appreciate it I hey, love thank that. Thanks, thanks for stopping for by. Checking. Bye. Yeah, thanks for checking in. Thanks for making <laughs> me realize that what I'm doing is working. Because you're going to need that. Thanks, man. Cause... That's good. Yeah. It's okay. Thanks for letting That's me know what I'm doing is working. I love yeah. that. Absolutely. Because we have emotions. We're, we're all human. Yes. Ain't none of us perfect. We're never going to be perfect. And you know what? Maybe there'll be some days where it comes in and stays a little longer than I want them to. That's okay. She ain't part of my life no more, though. Mm. And these are these non-negotiables, right? Yes. Now I'm going to stick around. I'm going to go back to the things I was doing when I was feeling good. I'm going to yes. run a part of today. I'm going to make a better meal than I did yesterday. I'm going to read a little bit more. You know what? I'm, I'm going to give more gratitude to my job. I'm having a crappy day, so I'm going to give more. You, you see how that works? Like... You push yourself to that. And it's like, Chris, how do I develop these habits of, to do that? Focus on reps. The days you feel good. Reps. You, you do it on the days you feel good. Right? We spoke about this yesterday. Like most athletes, when you see them training, what they do first, they work on the stuff that they're great at. Mm -hmm. if I'm a good shooter. I shoot. And I'm going to shoot and shoot and shoot till I can't shoot no more. Get that down, right? Because what that's doing is that's telling your brain, you're practicing in your brain healthy habits. Now, let me work on the stuff that I don't, can't really do so well. Let me work mm -hmm. on my left hand. Let me work on dribbling a little bit more. Let me actually get my conditioning up because last time in the fourth quarter, I could barely shoot. Okay, let me get my legs right. Let me, that let me focus on that. But it starts with the things that you do really well. That's where you focus at. If... You're really good at cooking and you do that really, really, really well, right? That's your time to shine. That's what you're gifted with. Work on that the right way, though. Start putting more things into your diet. Start putting things like you focus on this because now the day's going to come when you want to order Popeye's, which I hate that I love, but you ain't part of my life no more, right? <laughs> um, if there's one fast food that I would try to be like, man, if I had all the money in the world, I'm going to open up a Popeye's, right? The way I used to think. Doing these things the right way on the days I want, don't, that I do want Popeye, I'm going to lean more on that. Let me, let me go get the greens out more. Let me do this more. Even if today I'm just like, I really didn't want you today, man. I, I really did it. I didn't want to make this quinoa. You know what I mean? <laughs> I really didn't want to do this, you know? But it really becomes a continuous thing to now. It just, it's a subconscious thing, man. It really is. Yep. It really is. Awesome. My last question for you is, other than how can people connect with you? We'll get to that. But what do you feel is the most rewarding part of what you do? Seeing people get inspired. Inspiration is something that got me out of bed. And I know the power of just what a small little sentence can do. And for mm. me, that's the biggest thing. When I get a message, when I get a, you know, a, what I like to call a sustained message, meaning that something happened and now you're in a season of sustainment. You know, like, Chris, you said this one thing, sparked the change, and now I didn't just make a change. I'm in a season of sustaining this change and for me man that that's that's everything for me and that's why i say that whatever god does through me i don't even i long stop thinking about myself i really think about that one person when i decide to have a message that i'm gonna share on video create a video from somebody else a product i want to release anything it's with that type of mind frame like, I'm not going to sit here, which I work out all the time. I could sell protein. I could sell pre-workouts and things, right? I don't use these things. 
You right. Do that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to tell you and share something with you that I don't believe in in myself. Because God is going to put that in you and it's going to fly right by like this guy and what he's talking about. That. When, yeah. When I have those, and I get a lot of them every day. Every day. And that's really the most inspiring thing. It's like, one little thing I said inspired you to change your life. That that that's job well done for me, even if it was just one of them, man. And that's really the biggest, most fulfilling thing to see someone doing something for them that helped them become a better version of them. Even mm -hmm. though I don't get to buy my book, if you don't buy a shirt, if you don't even share my video, I, that part right there is what means the most to me. Because all of my work, as much as I've done speakings and coachings and mentorship. Those conversations that I have in DM, that right there, that for me is what that's, that's my God's work right there. The conversations that nobody's ever going to know about that I pulled my car over and I gave you a five minute voice note because what you said inspired me so much and I want you to keep going. Mm -hmm. that right there, that's the most fulfilling part by far. It's almost humbling in a way too. Like I'm still naive to certain things because I just well, I always will be like, I made you do that. Like it wasn't <laughs> the video I created of somebody else. Like you know, like that. And that's why I also do it from others because if their voice could make you make a change, that's why I didn't make it all about me. If you look at my entire brand, it's it's I'm now starting to put more of me right when it mm. used to be everyone else with sprinkles of me. Because that's really who I am at my core. If if I see that somebody else's thing that could help you, inspire you, and help you change, I have no problem sharing my platform with them. I'll make a video out of you in a heartbeat if I felt like it's something somebody else could grow from. Even if it's something I didn't even experience. Can't tell you how many videos I've made, thoughts I've shared, that God put in me that I might not have necessarily overcame. Mm -hmm. But... I need you to hear this because you're going to be that one person that went through this and it's going to help you. That right there, man, that's everything. Word. Yeah. Yeah. And I use that intentionally, y'all. Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> it's an old school I mean, term, but yeah. You know, if we Word. want to talk about, you know, how to grow hair and stuff like that. I don't know. I can't do that. <laughs> you know, but if there's anything that I can do in my power, you know, I got you. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being on, Chris. Appreciate you, yes, man. man. Absolutely. Where can let people know where they can find you, where they can look forward to the book, all of that, all of that. Yeah, so it's simple. I mean, the hub will always be my Instagram, which is Mr. Mr. Trifecta Mindset, um, which I'm creating like link trees and things to kind of take you everywhere else because I have TikToks and Facebook groups. But that right there is where you can always reach me, find me, message me. Um, I'm one of those that I literally deliberately take two days out of the week to go through my folders of the message of people who don't follow, who I don't follow back. And I will sit there for hours and make sure I, I respond to every single person, every Friday, every Sunday. All right. Y'all heard that. So make sure you follow him. You've seen his name on the screen. And then, of course, it'll be in the show notes as well. So one way or another, make sure you track him down. Make sure you follow him. DM him. You see that he yeah. reads your messages. It's not, a, it's not a VA. It's not an assistant. Bruce, like, yeah. it's Chris. Oh, yeah. My, so, that's nothing. My page is on me. I don't have a yeah. social media manager. I don't have a brand manager. I don't have. I do know eventually I, I'm going to build a team around me. But right now, it's literally all me from every aspect. All right, guys, be sure to follow him and hit him up. And if you're not following here, be sure to subscribe here at yeah. Getting the Win on YouTube. And, you know, make sure at Getting the Win show on Instagram, Pinterest, and Threads. Those yeah. are my three other places Thank that I live. Thank you for having me, Melissa. I really appreciate you. Absolutely, Chris. Great to have you on. And, you know, the door is always open. So, you know, you're always welcome to come back. Yeah, we're going to do this again. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, once the book releases, we're going to do this again. Yes. You got to make sure to do that. Yes. That does it, guys. This is it for the Chris Nunez interview. Hopefully you enjoyed both parts, both weeks. Thank you so much for tuning in again. Be sure to follow him on Instagram, 
at Mr. Dot Trifecta Mindset. And be sure to follow me. Subscribe here on YouTube at Getting the Win. And you can follow me on Instagram, Pinterest, and Threads at Getting the Win Show on those on those networks. So drop your comments below, your ahas, your takeaways, and your updates. Whatever your hashtag luxury item is, let me know where you are on that. We're we're officially in season two. You know what I mean? Where are you with your luxury item? Have you completed it? If so, drop those wins in the comments. Drop those wins in the DMs. Let me know so we can celebrate with you. In the meantime, have a great rest of your Wednesday and a great rest of your week. Peace out. And be sure to check out the merch shop. If you are curious about the shirt, you want one for yourself, you can go to gettingthewingear.com. That way you, you see this shirt, you'll see a bunch of other accessories as well. We've got hoodies, we've got sweats, we've got all the gifts that you could possibly want to buy for yourself and for your folks to get the message out about being as productive as possible and staying true to yourself. Because the mission of this show is to turn procrastinators into producers. That's why I always task you guys to hashtag get on that and make sure you're on top of your luxury item. And that way you can rock the gear to remind the world that you are all about that luxury item. You are all about getting things done, getting the goals instead of simply setting them.